Thank you, Tom. All right, I think we're ready. All right, we'll call to order the November 4th Account Finance Committee meeting at 540. First, is there a certain order you want to do, Philip? No one's here, obviously, for each thing, but ARPA funds. We've received half of them. You want me to just kind of tell them why I'm going to add them to the list? Okay, so the we've received the one half of the ARPA funds, the 1.726. Is the other um, half next June? Yes. But we need, so we need to appropriate it as we decide where we're going to obligate the projects. Um, just because they could cross fiscal years or they could do something weird. So you guys already obligated the 568, 535 for the utility relief. You obligated that with your motion for the new budget. Um, Philip, Andre it was getting some equipment for the new meters. Um, mm -hmm. the new water meters. Um, so this 116, 298 is over a five year period. For the software. And for the, the software and the, it's for the digital read. Or is that all of them? That would, be, that would do the whole thing. All the books. It's, but it's, it doesn't put the meter in. Right, so the, no, it's just the software, software the no agreements and all that. Um, I would like the committee to recommend this full amount because the way I see it is if you if your project is obligated by December 24, as long as it's complete by 26, it, you're still eligible to use your ARPA funds for it. So I believe it'll still cover the five-year. The project we would do. Anyway. The meter replacement, but it would be stretched out yeah, much longer. So this will get it done. So that's the total figure except for labor. This is just for, yes, yeah, so this is for the software, software and the... And the reading... This isn't going to be every five years, or every no, no, year, no. for five but years. Up here on the top, where it's the possible expense, you've got 300000 minus the one sixteen. Correct. So is the three hundred the total amount? Three hundred is what we had originally budgeted Philip wanted to use for meters. And it came in less. Well, this isn't all of them. No, this is just the software. The difference for Correct. The to, meter replacement. Right. The actual physical meters itself. This 116 is for the software, for the computers to read it, for the vehicles yeah. to read them now. Um, this the, is just for the software administrative side yeah. of. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this will allow you to read a meter from a pickup truck. Correct. Just like the electric does right now. Yeah. And so, what it is, is because we're going to have to, we have certain compliance things to follow and report to the federal government how we're spending it and the progress of the projects. So I'm trying to be more project specific once we know a certain dollar amount because um, I'm able to categorize it a lot better to meet the federal regulations. Um, I, I'll interrupt just very quickly. We received $1.75 million mm -hmm. in cash in May of this year. Mm -hmm. Okay, We got that. We took a million of it and we put it in a CD at Benchmark. And then the seven hundred fifty thousand, we use five hundred and some of that, that high for the percentage, correct? Huh? Drawing that high interest rate. Two point six or two point five eight right now until the first of January, and then we've got to come up with a different. Thing. Do we have that on the agenda to rebid all that stuff in January? Well, him and I have talked about it, and we, we probably need to rebid it in December. Well, that's some. That's a lot of money. I don't think it's January one. I think it's February one. So we had talked to, to, to get the approval to rebid it. Mm -hmm. At the December or January meeting, because you know, if I request banks to bid it now, it you need to be within like right. I need to time it. We need to yeah, close yeah. out the CD, so get the funds, right. and then I felt like once I had my final total of the CD value, um, then we figure out are we keeping interest, are we putting that back in? Then I can come to you with that amount to request for the banks. Sorry. And no, then, you're okay. So you get seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, and you can see of that five hundred and. Sixty-eight thousand dollars, real cash, and that is sitting in the money market account, and that's for utility relief. Okay, that we keep council voting when we did the budget, mm -hmm. and then the difference of that five hundred sixty-eight from that seven hundred fifty thousand is what you see for part of that meter reading. Now, it's not three hundred thousand if you do the math, so part of it's going to have to be in next year's allocation that comes in May of twenty-two. So, and then I also, we, we came to you guys and y'all didn't say anything about the um, public sector premium pay bonuses. So, what I have here are these two 
project and expenditure reports. You know, you guys can review it, see what you want to do. If you want to make a recommendation for the committee meeting, I mean, for the council meeting, we'll, we'll proceed with that. I just put some supporting documents with it, too. So stuff, other stuff that's on here, like the Hodges Street, Waterline, Cox Road. Cox Road ain't gonna make it. If we do the armory, we're not gonna have enough for the Correct. Cox Road Waterline. And tell you the truth, the county still has not told me whether they let us put Whether they will mandate. Well, obviously, we know the Fort Avenue manhole, South Main Street 2B. Uh -huh. We're doing that. Do we need to? Why don't we just go ahead and approve those and get them done with? But we're not using but you don't have. What we've done so far with the ARPA money is going to be armor, utility relief, and meter. These other ARPA activities, they're not going to be because it's another money. Gotcha. Okay. So, like South Main 2B, I want to get the cash saved. We had spent a bunch for the ice storm. And I think Jennifer's got reporting for you today in it. Um, and those projects are just going to have to be general funded in the budget, capital projects in the budget. Is the manhole, what is this manhole that's, I mean, 80,000? Oh, it's an old brick, crappy manhole right at the end of it. It's a corner of Southwest and Fort. That's it, close to where uh, Wayne and Donald Lewis live yeah. at that intersection. And then the sewer line goes under the railroad track into the place on a road. Gotcha. And we, we've already designed it. We did it out one time as an alternate, and we didn't accept it. We didn't have the money. Right. So it still needs to get done because that's an old, crummy manhole right there. And the plans are done, but we just haven't put the money to it. And I'll try to do it this year, but Harper's not going to be able to pay for that. Hodges Street water line? Hodges Street is the only street in Blackstone that I know of that doesn't have water. And remember that woman came with that yeah. thing of crumbled she's, up in water? She's since passed away. Has she really? Yeah. I don't think anything about it. So that's, no. that's down the street from you. Yeah. Next to the garden center. Yeah. yeah. And we ran a, a water line for her and hooked her up. I mean, Chastity I mean, rents from us up there from a house that mom and dad own. Really? She yeah. passed away? What is it? She, I think, liver or fate. I oh can't remember God. what it was. She was a young woman. Yeah. Um, so most of this stuff, if it ain't meter or associated with meter, and ain't associated with utility relief and water, it's just going to be general. So we're expecting with the, all the money that we get, which is what, 3.4, 3 3.5? Mm -hmm. Armory at 2.2. Two two. Mm -hmm. Utility re relief, just say almost 600. 600,000. Mm -hmm. um, There's 116 for the just this first portion, but totally you, you guys obligate 300 towards meters. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So what is that total so far? That's there. 900 would be 3.1. So then you've got the, you've got 400,000 remaining. I want to get all the meters done. Correct. And if so we do it in that budget, great. Uh, we may not use all the utility relief. Who knows? You know, yeah, uh, we may have some of that left over, but until we get the armory farther along, you don't, don't want to expect to jump yeah, into a million dollar water project and go, damn, I wish I had kept that money for armory. Yeah, correct. Right. It's going to be a whole lot easier for me to find water and sewer money than armory money. Yeah. Um, and I can tell you, we're moving along with the armory. We're going to have a recommendation for you um, on an architect. Uh, and I've called the selected architect uh, from the committee. And uh, hopefully in six months we'll have a, a committee recommending contractor for the council to get started. So armory is moving along. Yeah. Now, if there is ARPA money left over within the time frame, like I said, that something like that Fort Avenue manhole, I did that right last yeah. year. I need to find the order. You've got it all done. Ready right to change the dates and put in the city. But I feel like your water meters are going to eat up anything that you're doing. It's going to be more expensive than we have. And it's something that we've been wanting to do, but. Yeah. And Andre needs to replace a lot of meters anyhow. He's got some meters that ain't reading them well. And when I say not real well, probably slow. They yeah, just so that everybody knows, it's yeah. not that we're over. They run faster. <laughs> they typically will run slow. Yeah. And uh, so we've got some old meters that we need to replace. Maybe we'll try to make that happen. And, uh, we did a little uh, a test on it already out there at uh, Fast Food. And I think they got most of these things checked out to do the meters on. So the biggest kink we have is getting access to the property. So we still have to go out there. So have to drive around. And the driving track and getting them to let us across it. Yay! Know where the old ECS 88 was? Huh? You know where ECS 88 was right off of Deering Road? It was, it was right in front of where my house, my yeah, house was. I do. Yeah. Okay. The back and entrance. There's contractors in there right now. They just put up this huge tent and they're serving all the meals to the Marines and the contractors. 
We had a DPW was out there today because they were reading their water meters or something. Mm -hmm. They were expending 10,000 gallons a day. It's 11,000 gallons. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> so I was like, we got the, I got the they message do? from Andre. I was, like, I was like, how the hell are they? Because you got to remember, doing. how much is that? 11,000 gallons. It sounds like a lot, right? It is a lot. Well, it is when you multiply it by 30. <laughs> Thousand gallons. What do they pay for water on paper? Less than ten bucks. Mm -hmm. Seven See? ten. Seven dollars. What, what do you see? Per thousand. Mac? So it's seventy-seven bucks a day times thirty days. What is that? Twenty-one hundred bucks. What do you see? Vumac brings. How many gallons a day do you think they would use at full capacity? If you remember, uh, for comparison, not only Commons out here uh, on forty. If you remember when they came to us and said we need to do room water capacity and all right. that kind of stuff. They, in fact, was theirs on 55,000 gallons a day. Okay? So there was a host, but it was a 400 room pool set. And it had a bunch of buckets parked up in town right in down there. So I'm going to say you're probably going to look at, in a fast fee of about a 30,000 gallon a day project, I would say you're probably going to do somewhere similar to a fast fee for 40, probably 30,000 gallons a day. I mean, as fast fee as big as that is, mm -hmm. and you get that little tent, it's not yeah. little as big. Yeah. It's doing eleven. I mean, twenty one hundred dollars a month is a good water bill, and we'll take them all day long. And are they dropping that right back into our sewer line, or is that, is that yeah, new? could be. Yeah. The only thing you can drop by health department regulations is maybe some gray water, which is like wash water or something like that. But for the most part, I didn't know if that deployed yeah, resources to figure out what they were doing out there that they're using that much water though. That's the, that was the thing. They could. That's a meter right off the yeah. hydrant. Yeah, 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 and it's it's not a leak or anything. It's, you would see it. Uh, yeah. You, but it's, you, it's, I mean, it, they're running a kitchen, but it's not like a, it's not as big as the other kitchens that they're running. No bathroom so, hooked up to it. Or I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's portage portage now, we are getting a flow from the portage zone, and I looked at this month of Allison, we did invoices. Uh, it was the first full month that Allison had done. Yeah. Um, I just kind of keep up with it. Um, one contractor got an invoice for like $990. Another one got like 250 bucks. So we're probably doing $1,500 coverage through CSA as a kitchen plant. So mm -hmm. if they're going directly in the line, we'll never know. Mm -hmm. Other than we know it's going in there, but we won't know the amount of flow. Um, it just shows up in the parking ticket general consumption. And uh, I don't think you'll see a huge increase because that is so fluctuating with the rain. Yeah. That little bit that would go in there, I don't see that would be able to. Excuse me for getting off. No, no, that's fine. I'm sorry. All right. Outstanding debt. This is why. Much better than I thought. Uh, worse than I thought. Oh, but no. Uh, well, there, there, so it's a lot of stuff. You emailed a couple in here, yeah. questions, and then Phyllis has questions on them. And so as I'm getting the questions, I'm getting where it needs to dig deeper. I think I found three already that need to be abated. So go down the, the outstanding debt summary list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A V R E N. That's that's aviation rent. Okay, so that's the hangers. Hangers. Mm -hmm. All right. B D E C K. Bad check. Now that I believe is a posting error. Like okay. I don't know why it's posted. So we've got a lot of interface issues. With well, just like you had responded to the Nottaway County debt of two hundred or twenty five thousand. Mm -hmm. We've had that checked. Why should we have any kind of error as to it's where that's going? the way going? the cashiers are when the person comes to bring the payment and they don't know that there's a bill, they're not looking deep enough to know that there's a bill on the system. So, they just so what it is, it is, is so Nottaway County sent the 25 grand, the girls posted it to the same code, but they didn't apply it to that invoice and the system is not mm -hmm. smart enough to recognize. Is that the fire? Yeah. Money per year or something like that. Yes, that's been a couple of years because it's forty-five. It's two thousand fifteen. That's why I immediately asked. Right, her. so that's what happened. And so that yeah. check came like, in, and the cashiers posted it as revenue, but didn't match it with that outstanding invoice. And Henry Williams is an outstanding invoice, but that's been paid as well. The very last one. So we really have to go through this. And probably clean it out. From the yeah, but. The biggest part, so the, the, the scariest number in there is 456. That's the outstanding deed of trust for these houses that we built. But they all got wiped out. Correct. But the deed of trust still ex exists. 
because if they turn around and, and the state, uh, we called them and said, do we release these things? And they said, no, because if they turn around and sell it, we still expect them to pay the proceeds from the state. So that will never be reduced. It was right that so state on the yeah. system. But okay. Well, that stays on the system until 10 years deed of trust comes through, mm -hmm. and then when we release it, it'll come out. Okay, so after 10 years, they after can then sell it and not pay it. They don't owe us anything. Gotcha. It's a 10-year deed of trust. I thought, so the way you were saying it first, I thought it was so forever. So they sell it within the 10. That we within gotcha. the 10, they got to pay the outstanding portion of it. Say they sell it in five years, they got to pay half the cost gotcha. of the deed of trust. So where, which line item would be items such as curb and gutter and RAC tearing down houses? RAC 100. Yep, 56,000. I think, and maybe some other things are included in there. So ERCG, excuse me, ERCG is 56,000. Two hundred ninety-eight dollars. That is curb and gutter. Yeah. And I think there may be some others like SP. Back when when they used to, used to put things on, a lot of the curb and gutter was put under this special project. Brittany and I don't use that code anymore. So we see SP ten, yeah. SP fourteen. That's curb and gutter. Gotcha. So if the curb and gutter is fifty-six, so you've got seventy-five thousand in curb and gutter, roughly. So we so we just paid off today. Uh, we received. Uh, 3500 for one curb and gutter project, and it's going to be refinancing, and we're going to get a check for 1875 So minus mm -hmm. about there. Minus and then the big, the big part for your um, REC 100 total, you've got some demo expenses. So it's mostly demolition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you got that Tunstall Avenue big demo project. Yeah, that one's what, 13? Yeah. That's what I remember looking at. 13 mm -hmm. yeah, or 14, yeah. Look at DLPI. Those are your outstanding, um, those DBI loans we had talked about. They're, 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 yeah, are they they're not paid. supposed, they don't have to be paid back? Yeah, yeah. they're supposed to be paid back. Only one, 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 I mean, actually, what's the drawback? What's the? I met with Taylor today, and Taylor has indicated that he will make those contacts. If not, then it's going to turn over to us. Maybe that's it's one. state money. I mean, it's not even our money. It's state I money. agree, yeah, but I mean. Is it one just that's current? One current. Okay. We put it out there to help mm -hmm. and we need it back so that it can be aided to go uh, help, help other people. Others. I get you. Yeah. And what I've told Taylor is by the time we go to council meeting on the 15th, we want everybody on a payment plan that everybody's in with and everybody's Is there a way, and see it's stuff like that to where I feel like if we wouldn't have done this audit, it may have just slipped and we may not. On this? Yeah. No, 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 there's no slip. They've signed the documentation. I mean, there's actually an agreement, a contractual agreement. So it's binding, I mean, it's binding. legally. Yeah. Now, so if they go bankrupt, it's well, yeah. good luck getting it. But, yeah. uh, I know one thing. I feel like this help. list needs to be stayed up to date constantly. So the thing is, is customers, we only get socials for people that are setting up an electric account. We can collect a lot of money. We collect a lot off of those social, finding those it's socials. Earned. That's how I can find out where they're working. Right. Um, but some customers, like these grass deals, you know, if this person never set up an electric in their name, maybe it was in grandma's name, we would never be able to track them down Correct. or garnish their checks or, you know, really. And then the signed payment agreement is really what binds us to collect these amounts. Um, and, you know, we don't get signed agreements for the grass and we don't get signed agreements for like the curb and gutter. So that really... No, I, no, no, no. I do have a signed agreement. Right, but that's just for the lien, right? No Certainly payment agreement. Trust is but there's no Correct. payment agreement. Not right. a payment agreement because there's not an obligation to pay. Right. And a lot of those grass, I can tell you, the grass, you'll never get. No, uh, delinquent property, they're, they're derelict property. I mean, I, I bought one of them over on Maven Avenue before, and you buy it cheap enough to where the town's not going to get reimbursed by their amount no. on the lien. Mm -hmm. It's forgiven. We're lucky to get our tax. So, I don't know. I just, you know, I feel and then like it goes, this goes, you know, say Dan, we send a bill for somebody for electrical work mm -hmm. right so that contractor never set up electric here in town but then doesn't pay it this is just a hypothetical mm -hmm. I, I, I can how, tell you a true story you know how can I, I i would really like to iron down these payback procedures payment agreements for like everything well, I, I purchased it a lot as you know on lunenburg avenue recently and, and the closing document it showed that it was curb and gutter thirty five hundred so you got, got it. you just got it we got it because of that so and, we, and i signed the release today and how do we but make that's sure that's on every for, one of them for, for the sale of a property every you know, curb and gutter project has one recorded at the courthouse mm -hmm. since 2011. right 
Prior to that, there are some that are not recorded at the courthouse that we have on our books, specifically curb and gutter on 8th Street around the old, uh, what's that, the Jerome Lane. Mm -hmm. Just prior, prior to Jerome Lane, there's like $8,000 lane on that property at the courthouse. Yeah. At Mr. Mooneyham's house, you may or may not remember Dick Mooneyham. Yeah. That house has been sold at least twice, and it is in the courthouse. And it's never been compensated yeah. for. Whereas your transfer picked it up. Yeah. I mean, that lane look, is still there. You look at grass, we're at over 15,000. We're going to be eclipsing 16. Yeah, you're not going to get the grass back. I agree. This I, I know, but is there a way that at some point in time, I mean, because, like Jennifer says, how can you. Hey, Clinton? Oh, or at least, how, how, well, do, we, like how do we enforce the town or the county to send these to auction sooner rather than late and waiting for 10 years? We've been cutting a lot of these properties for a long time. A long time. When the people say you pay the taxes and then we get delinquent and it's, uh, it's just the not grass fair. thing, not so much. The other thing, and it, we usually now on a property where it gets big enough for an individual property, I don't know if you put a park as a number like $300 or $400, we have recorded liens at the courthouse, on, yeah. but those are liens. Well, can't we add that bill to their taxes? If we can, I'm fine. It does say we can I mean, the property. paying the taxes, then why can't we just the add demolition, $60 to the that? demolition can be collected on public tax. I just we just need to check it. I mean it's not fair. And Fifteen grand, grand in the grand scheme of things isn't that much. But it's a lot. Even if it was Yeah. I don't know what and Larry if you do that do you do that for twenty more years, we may be at at fifty thousand dollars. So do you want me to kind of get with Brittany and see what her treasurer group and yeah, what obviously, you can do to collect some of these other things that we know aren't absolutely the back? And, and the obviously, CSLR, where's that? That's the Church Street um, housing project. That was forgiven. Was that forgiven? Uh, most of them are, uh, well, they don't have to make payments, but the deed of trust hasn't been released for right. all of them. Well, can we segregate those to where it shows, obviously, the county one can go off. The 25 yeah. grand. Well, I'm going to come to you guys again with another mm -hmm. list. I've got at least three to four that we no, need to No, I mean, this is good that we can see. I mean, if the general public looked at it and goes, we almost have outstanding, not including utility bills or anything, almost a million dollars, they would think we're crazy. So that's why we need to take what mm -hmm. the deed of trusts are that were just recently forgiven. Let's mm -hmm. separate those. Segregate that out. Okay. Yep, separate those. Because mm -hmm. obviously that's a fault. That's There's really nothing we can that's do That's taking out a half a million right there. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Absolutely. We need to try to collect any of these that, if, that we can. Yeah, let me see what Brittany says. Like what? Th there's just certain things I'm just not sure. Um, What's the rent? It's eleven hundred dollars. Right. So that rent is for the um, hangers. The ad rent is for the SBO building. But I know Joe is current on his mm -hmm. yeah. um, payments because he pays like six months at a time. Um, right. So I think well, that I think that one is hanging out there and needs to be abated off, like I said. And um, there's weatherization is that weatherization on the bottom where it says fifty one thousand three hundred nineteen dollars. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fifty one thousand three nineteen. So 000. is that money that is owed back? That comes back. Yes. They pay that because it's local money, so they're still making their monthly payments. Right? Correct. Is it all up to date? Because again, that's money Mr. Miller wants yes. to do whether you they know there's one person not. that is not up to date. Well, she's I just, got one that's not current. Okay. There is one that's not current. I just want that's they, money that Mr. Miller wants to see being reused. And they, so let's make sure we get that. Reacted miserably. But they make a payment every month. They just didn't make payment for several months at the beginning. Gotcha. Right. Mm -hmm. But they, they come in every month and make payments. Right. And uh, don't have to pay the whole thing, so they'll get. Five extra months on the end. We'll just go so I'll, I'll come back to you guys with a revised list, and then when Brittany can meet with us, and I'll get as much details as far as what can we do to collect these old ones. And I think moving forward, what can what kind of information can we collect? You know, if, if I can get, social get social for everything, well, you're never gonna get on grass. Mm -hmm. Grass is a lost cause. You can see. Three or four of them are, are being sold. So can, 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 why can we not get social for real estate? For real estate. For for taxes, like we can't request their their socials. 
is when they move here in the, in the land. You just want to try to get it into urns. I just try to get it into urns, or don't let it we it. use the DEC to find current employees. Gotcha. We do it for utilities. Right, for utilities, right. we request the socials. we got to ask Tessie, or if Tessie's already looked it up. Or no, I think we need to exhaust any way there is to get it. Now, and keep in mind, too, I don't know if she has noticed, some of these houses that we've torn down, people are making payments on. And maybe it was a dollar. She one. did know yeah. if they're current as long as something's being or if they're outstanding. Yeah. What if, like on inspection? And there's one three fifty dollar invoices that the people have not paid. Yep. These are those rental inspections. I mean, we, we should turn the lights off. To be honest. <laughs> well, I can tell you what. We've got. I'll give you an example on Northwest Avenue. There's a gentleman that came to us and said, "I want underground power." Can we? We put it in. It was taking out a, a, a mobile home and putting in a double wire. I'd like my power to be underground. Not a problem. Not everybody agrees. Pay for the wire. Pay for the wire. Two hundred seventy-eight dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. They made a hundred-dollar payment. The individual said, "I'm on disability. I ain't paying that stuff." <laughs> I would like to be able to <coughs> figure out how you cut that power off. That's how you get their attention. Oh, that's the only I way. I see them on the street it. all the time. Talk to them all the time. Obviously, right here. Two hundred seventy-eight bucks, and it's probably. Not worth a big headache, but that's one hundred seventy-eight dollars, and you said this was something you were going to pay, and he didn't pay. And you could cut the power off for it. No, he's no. saying he wish, wishes he could. Because so if he, he paid a hundred of the hundred and seventy-eight, paid a hundred of two hundred seventy-eight, oh, he had an outstanding one seventy-eight. So do we want to ask Tessie what we're we could cut? We're going to waive that if it comes before council. Well, I want to keep this. I don't think we can, but I don't know. Why we waive it for other people? I would but like to see. State code's going to have to give you permission to do this. Though. I would like to see, is there a way this list can stay updated, updated on a regular basis? Because well, no offense, if someone comes up yet, here. Because if we see that number going up, well, if, 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 and if the public saw well, yeah, that, let me come, like, Let me come back to you with a revised sheet. Mm -hmm. Like Eric said, take out the housing ones. We have no control right. over collecting them. Well, a lot of it, I can tell you, and I know we probably shouldn't feel this way up here, but if say if X, Y, and Z owes a $50 inspection and they come up here, and they come to us complaining about something, I'm going to look at you and go, look here, buddy. I think Your opinion true. really does not matter much to me because you owe the citizens of Blackstone. I think some of them too can be picking up the phone. Yeah. And say, did you know you owe shit? Hell, I had no idea. Well, before Andre will go back and put power to the new house you've got, you got to get this cleaned. I mean, I, if a business comes to us that owes money to the town for a grant or a loan that was given out, I'm sorry. I don't feel sorry for you at the point in time until that's right. Made right. About a fifteenth of three. Yeah. And I Give know. Give the tailor an opportunity. And I know of thirty grand right off the top that we need to evade off. That that not a way one. There's that yeah. not a way one, and then there's a UID Pro one that I know he paid. It was his mm -hmm. tax, or he had, it just wasn't posted right. So I know of thirty. I gotta evade off. So what's the and I, just because it's not a private name, but what's the downtown Blackstone one for five hundred ninety five dollars? I have no idea. Taking it off the. <laughs> I'm sure that I'm probably going to get paid for that. Yeah, I'll get details on that one. So this one we'll just and table till we meet again. Like Philip B and B Consultants, you can obviously find out what that is. That's thirteen thousand. Right. Earthly clue I, that they owe us something. I don't know what that. We usually owe them. Correct. And I don't know what they would. See, and that was back us. in 2013. It's yeah. got to be something. I dare say it's going to be something associated with uh, Church Street Project. If you remember, we had a problem with the original design with B&B. Yep. Curb and gutter heights and all that, B&B yeah. &B admittedly said we'll fix it. And um, so they know. took responsibility. Maybe we showed something. Um, we Maybe just need we to show a record if right. they paid it, evaded, or if they gave us a credit on another right. invoice. That we need to that's and that's probably what it was. Try to keep this stuff up to date and stay on top of it. Now that's the, the only thing that I know B&B &B is ever owed us. The bad check thing, I don't know what that's about. Those are bad check fees that maybe the person just wrote a bad check and then left the residence. Right, and then, and then just never got current. Because they'd have to pay their bad check fee to get current back on if they wrote correct. a bad check. But, um, I'm trying to get any more details on that. I know it seems like a lot, but it, curb and gutter is less than I thought. Oh, that's a whole lot less than what I was well, telling you that it was. Yeah. Right. Sure. Far less than what I thought. But like I said, we just cleaned up thirty five hundred a day and eighteen seventy five is coming. Can you go off this list and make sure that there's actually deeds recorded for these correctly? I think we did that one time before, but yeah, absolutely. 
And, and I, that's when I found the, the Moody Ham one. Yeah. I can tell you the ones that I've done since I've been here, all have been recorded. That's a definitive. And I think probably some of this, um, and I think maybe Larry did it differently. He didn't necessarily record everyone, but they put them on the machine. I think mm -hmm. there may not be something for that because you got to get them to sign. You probably haven't got to sign. Um, I mean, it's good information to have. Seven oh, or excuse me, nine fifty seven North Main Demo, for example, on an RSC one hundred. They make a hundred dollar month thing with those little old ladies. It's right next to L. B. Harris's shop. Mm -hmm. They are making payments. That was more recent too. And that was a fairly recent one. And uh, one sixteen Taylor Street. Uh, until that property is sold, you won't see that. The junk is gone, and, and the house is literally on the ground. One Center Street. So, like that, that little old lady that, 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 that demo you were talking about, they've agreed to pay it. They signed a payment agreement. They signed a payment agreement, but like your other ones, like the warehouse one, he, he was like, I'm not doing anything he with that. Been, that. You had to condemn that one? And I filed a deed, I filed a deed of trust on that mm -hmm. at the courthouse for 14000 But right. if you remember, we're in about seventh place. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to get that. There were plenty of judgments and liens already there. But it is recorded at the courthouse as a lien that uh, well, the property is listed for sale, but it's not going to be enough for you to get what you want. He's not going to be able to sell it unless he gets enough, unless he goes bankruptcy or something like that. Okay. But right. do value somehow the fact that it's not rid of 50 crummy houses in town. Agreed. So there's some value here, otherwise, we'd be looking at. Junk, junk but I just want us to, each time we talk to somebody, like you said with the people next to L.B. Harrison, before we even say, hey, we I can just put a lien on the property. I should be able to look this up on my Chromebook. And, like, you should, we, I'll put it on the drive and we could search it right yeah. then. Right before then, we like, even say, hey, we can put a lien on your property, we all say, hey, we can do a payment plan and put a lien on your property. And you, we need to always say there's a payment plan option. Yeah. Even if we got ten dollars a month on a twenty thousand dollar property, it may never get paid off, but it's something. Right. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Tom, yeah. any more questions on that? Feel mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Hang on your hat, guys. Yeah, no, this is look at, look at the camera, and you can see that the fuel adjustment, which usually is adjusted one time a year in April, Dominion Power, the cost of of a natural gas has gone through the roof, and as a result, and contractually, they are permitted to increase their um, fuel adjustment during the course of the year. Like I said, we usually adjust it in April, and they are asking or notifying us that on October 21st, or October 28th, Dominion agreed to a VEMA, which is our proposal of increasing the fuel adjustment charge by a tenth, or excuse me, one penny kilowatt hour for usage starting October 1st, through March 31st, 22. The fuel adjustment will increase from 0 .00439, okay, to 0 .014, which you can see is approximately a 300%. Right. What, how many, what is the average household used per kilowatt hour? Well, I will tell you, we looked up Mr. Miller the other day, and he only pays like a $4 a month fuel adjustment charge. But he's a single person, so it would go to, I'm Potentially twelve bucks a month or something. Well, I like that. base this. This is based on a seventeen, sixteen kilowatt hours, and I think this was your one of your bills back yeah. when we were looking at the PPA mm -hmm. was that usage. So I'll, I'll see a seventeen dollar increase yeah. in fuel mm -hmm. adjustment charge. Correct. And I can tell you, we're extremely frugal with electricity, so that's not much usage. I mean, see, so you're going from seven dollars and fifty cents to seventeen dollars and sixteen cents. Going to twenty four dollars. Right. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, right, 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 right. Okay. All yeah. good. Yeah. All right. So, and we don't have to advertise that because that's in that. That's in that power cost that adjustment. Power cost that is not a profit to us. As everyone. Let knows, the record reflect. We're not going to keep one dime of this. Any of that. That is because of fuel costs and that goes to. The and then, and let the record also reflect. This is one hundred percent due to green energy <laughs> initiatives. Okay. And a lot of folks like that. A lot of folks don't like it. But the reality of 
is there's a cost to the consumer, and this is part of the cost of the consumer um, for transitioning from coal to other alternative energies and that sort of thing. You know, I've had a lot of people come to me and say, oh, alternatives are much cheaper. Well, that may be if you just look at the, the production of a kilowatt hour based on coal or something else, but all these other factors that are coming into it, including accounting write-downs, which is most of that true up, that's got to be factored in the cost of the transition. This is, it's expensive to do. Do you and think eventually, once all everything's transitioned, because there's no going back, I mean, at this point in time, I think it's always going to be green initiative. For the well, most sure. Part. Do you ever see that startup is typically higher? Mm -hmm. Do you see like this right da down? I think that the Dominion is not going to be able to come back and re write down these or get a depreciation credit yeah. on their coal plants at one time. Okay. So, yeah, I would say that 500 plus thousand dollars. So it may be for a three or four year period. But, uh, but you know, the way things are looking and are we going to be able to access other energy source? I don't know. But I can tell you in the near future. I think you're looking at higher, and you saw a 25 percent increase this year. Remember, it was 24 plus. You offset a good portion of that, um, but needs to say in one year, I've never even heard of it going up that much. This question on the bottom that says, "Would the committee like to approve using other funding to pay for the increase in fuel adjustment for October usage, which will not be passed on to the consumer customer?" It could be, con but we're, I think the, the intention is, can we use ARPA money to right, pay that one month? The customers, those bills just went out for. Mm -hmm. Did not include the extra Did not pennies per kilowatt. Right, because it's just timing wise. Philip didn't have mm -hmm. enough time to let everybody know. So that when BMO bills me for my our October usage, it's going to have this, whereas we will never collect that October increase. You said it's about $30,000, right? right? So I calculated it up based on what we last month, um, which was for the September usage October bill. We, we only paid. $12,655 for the fuel adjustment. But if I plug in this new rate, we would have paid 41. That's crazy. So it's roughly 28, 30 grand. And I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but it is in the grand scheme of things. So I can either, like he said, we may not use all of the 568 you guys already authorized to offset utility bills. Mm -hmm. If we could. Yeah, I mean, I think it would look bad short. if we that sat there and said, well, we didn't put in the like fuel adjustment charge in time. We're going to double charge it next month. Right, now we don't want to yeah. do that. Philip no. had said he wasn't. I mean, even if we were to prorate it out, yeah. out six months, it would. That's crazy that it's going to get green down. 30, so the town will be collect will be, will be billed $41,000 this and month. That's most as well. That's most as well. Yeah. Holy cow. If, if that consumption is the same. Right, if you base it on that same. Which, now the heat's being used. I mean, it's going. Oh, January, June, one and a half. Yeah. Now, remember, in April they can go up again on the fuel adjustment. How many times a year can they go up? Contractually, I know that they're entitled to do it every April, and we pass it on. I'll give you a copy. Yeah. Um, but I would say I, I think I they can't said tell you if they can do it every month, but every six, every months. six months is when they do a reassessment on it. So they could the change it slightly. But they can't come up next month and go, oh, yeah. fuel's going up again. We're going to go up more. Because you know it's six months out of April. Gotcha. Okay. Wow. That's crazy. So we could just use to yeah. offset it. You could. Because you'll never collect that October usage. If we, so we'll offset it. Our Do you need a motion for that? I think your original motion was to offset utility rates. Yeah. No. I think we're I'm fine that. with it. I mean. I'll, let me look into it. If I as long as we just, just make it known at our next council meeting of what we're doing. That you approved us that, to use yeah. that. Okay. I just don't want everybody thinking something shady. Do you, want, right. to make a, do you want to recommend them? Do you want to recommend using sure, make it the easy. utility ARPA money? To yeah, offset? well, I move that we use the ARPA money to offset the October usage, usage of the, the increase right. for the fuel adjustment fee. Which will be an approximate $28,828.87. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Second. And then you have water system. Phillips, they. Aye.
Well, oh, with, that number, that today, yeah. with that number, it's almost no need to talk about it at this point. Unless somebody else is going to be putting the bill. Now, here's the deal. Sat down with Mac Bug and Jennifer. She'd been keenly involved. She'd done a great job getting numbers to Mac and let him do his calculations. Um, end result is there's a significant amount of work to our system that has to be done in order to pump water to creeks. Okay. They can build the lines, but for us to get it to them, we've got to build bigger lines. And that really is the first, certainly these first two right here. Okay. That is the upsizing line on Fort Pickett and, and in, in town. But again, it's stuff that we wouldn't have to do if we weren't providing that service. That specifically you would not have so to. So it's still related to the project. It is related to the project. It's specific to the project. Specific to the project. The next section, I think, is the raw water intake improvements. Raw water pumps, that's going from like one pump to four pumps. Okay. Is that necessary for us right now? It is not. Is it necessary for the post? It is not. It would only have to, have to be done for this project. The raw water main line, I believe, even though it's a, probably the biggest number, I do think there is some fairness in spreading that around. Okay. I think the town, it's an 80-year-old pipe that's given to the town yeah. when all that was transferred over there. I can't say the lack of replacement and which would be figure? borne by the upper end of the county and the state facility. And those are the four main, and then the booster station. We just put that booster station in. Just put it in. Mm -hmm. In order to pump the water, that's specific to this project. And that's 245000 That's the booster station we put in with county money, correct? No. No, no, no. This is the water boot, the county money, the sewer, specifically. This is okay. all water. We just built the booster station down on 10th Street. Remember when we got rid of the one water tank and we got rid of the reservoir and we built the water line in front of the bowling alley? There's a new building out there on 10th Street, right at the very end of the runway. Yep. And you look at it, it's a little cinder block or a little mm -hmm. masonry building. And we built that to get rid of the water tank. It acts as a water, it gets the same effect as a water tank, okay? But we had to get fresher water because the water was sitting up in that tank, which is easier because the way the water presses, it now we're pumping without having the storage and the flooring problem. That was the alternative. And already, those pumps are not big enough if we want to do this. If you do this. Only if you do this, not. It's not definitive. You've got to vote on this. And to go out and have to borrow $13 million is a, is a shot. You don't have $13 million in debt now. I was about to say, our debt now is what, 12 Yeah, With the second phase of the extension, it would be at 13 It would double the amount of debt, practically, that you got. Now, okay. is it a good bet to get it back? Oh, yeah. I Thanks to town of Curlin right. and, and they're pretty good customer. And I think you'll get your money. But somebody else needs to co-sign on that bad boy. We, I think that uh, people smarter than I probably need to craft the documents and the agreements that need to be put together. Because what, what if, and you had mentioned this the other day, what if the state facility is closed? See, you're going to have to have an agreement with the state that says, we'll amortize it over 20 years, but in the event that you close, or you don't use the estimated guideline, it's paid for no matter what. You can pay for it. Yeah. You can't just have them come back and say, you know, we're not going to yeah. keep not only correctional open. And that is why we amortize on a 20 year, which is not a lower round, believe it or not, not 40 years with rural development. We can get it cheaper money, but 40 years, still, not only correctional yeah. center could be gone. Obsolete. Yeah. Well, we don't know what. I see something the other day, I don't know where I saw it, but he's one geriatric. So they've been talking. going to close that. It was something else that's coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. They were renovating and redoing a whole new another facility somewhere. Right. And, and they've been talking about closing Piedmont now. Nothing recent, nothing yeah, think, imminent, but I've heard. I think Piedmont's solid right now, but you never know. And BCBR could grow and that sort of thing. Now, the revenues that Mac has put together are based on a half a million gallons going between crew and the, and the um, state facilities right now. Okay. And how many do we use currently a day? We Here in Pickett? Between us and Pickett, it's about 400,000. 400, yeah. So it'd be over double. 300 and 100. Mm -hmm. Town of Crew uses uh, about 200 and plus thousand gallons. Uh, and then the state facilities are 351. End result is this is based on a 500,000 gallon a day total. But if it increases more than that, then there's opportunity to pay off the debt. Are them. they actively seeking us to do this right now? I mean, I haven't seen anybody up here. We haven't heard anything. Well, they're going to present it. I mean, we got the 
two rates now. Here's, what, here, here's the, the, the sticky part is we're also trying to negotiate the situation with the ticket there to get that resolved. And I think we're close. I think we're within 50 cents of what was proposed by the post and where Mac is at. So I think we're, we're pretty darn close. Um, and I think we're still, I'm supposed to sit, me and Mac will mm -hmm. sit down with him in December. Everybody's Michael holiday yeah, down yeah. for the year draft day. So. Last time he made a presentation, he said, 950 is what I've come up with, which is fair. This is based on penalties for the post. So can we come up with 50 cents or whatever? We just got to figure out how to do it. But what we've been trying to do with the 10 is to keep it so we get $200,000 a year that we can match to replace a bunch of pipes and stuff like that. And it's not coming back into the town. Yeah. So, or not coming back into our general, general, fund. Or general accounts. Or anything. I just, I mean, this is a big... Huge big ordeal. Well, I think that we didn't realize that we had to do that much upgrades. I mean, we just had did yeah. a big upgrade two years ago. So and for instance, I mean, who's know. paying for all these studies and stuff? Right? Well, it's that ten thousand dollars that you guys talked about with the stamp. Yeah. Um, that's what it is. Who's gonna pay for it? We got the message. We'll, 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 I, I, I got an email from the state today and said, and his contention is, well, all of this should be square here. I said, no, we don't need a twenty inch one line. We don't need an eighteen inch one line. But shouldn't they be coming to us, almost begging us to send water to them? I mean, we, I haven't heard anything. I mean, y'all obviously deal with them. them every day. I don't know what their options are. And I did talk to the town manager and crew. Um, he's been very forthright. Town crew has been great to deal with. He's, Brian's been a prince of a guy. And I think they, they're facing a lot of capital costs to upgrade their stuff. And, uh, you know, this would be less expensive to them than what they're looking at with Crystal Lake yeah. and treatment plan but they may decide at some point that's what they want to do and uh, um, but we sent this to the state we sent it to picket um, the folks that was and when I say state I'm talking to general services administration so we have a copy of that one of their uh, staffers sent me an email this morning and said we think we should spread all of this around more because you're gonna have the opportunity to hook on all these customers and do all these kinds of things we don't think we should be paying this much but the end result is we can't get the county to allow us to hook anybody up outside of town. No, you're, there's no mandatory. So there is no right connection here. We can't. Right. We cannot connect. Now, yeah. if somebody came to us and said, "Hey, I'd like to connect," that'd be one thing. Yeah, but if you get one person every two miles, I mean, that's just like Southside yeah. Electric out in the county. There's no way to project your revenue right. if, you, if no. it's not a mandatory mandatory hook on. You know, I mean, no. you can't have six people and you want to go in. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's going to help. Forty dollars for somebody, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the three three mile exactly. Wow, you, we're building all this and giving this to the town, but the county's made it clear. They They're ain't not really there. grooving on anybody hooking on. They're certainly not going to make anybody hook on. Yeah. And, um, it is what it is. So. I mean, the only main benefit I could see with the town it would be the actual volunteer services, like the fire department. You know, along that line, you're going to have the hydrants. Hydrants. Yeah. But I mean, that's not paying the bills. But that's on the other side of the fence. Correct. And so if you have a wreck on 460, that's true. Are we going to be able to work it out? I hope so. Do I think we will? Probably. Um, we like to help crew and we like to help VCG on and get them sorted and do it, but we can get still guys. I think million if bucks, we went to our, our citizens right now in Blackburn and said, hey, we're going to take a loan out for $13 million. But keep in mind, there's no town revenue going into this unless you split up some of those raw water. Correct. Lines. You're not going to have to put any rate increases. Town rates stay the same. Yeah. So you could even drop town rates right. because this does give us about half a million dollars of revenue according to Max's calculations in excess of expenditure for all 13 million bucks. So there's still going to be some money that comes to the town. I would propose we put it right back in the system. We've got 30 million dollars of daggone decrepit pipes. We probably need to not take that money and buy no, fire truck with it. Not at all. You know? Yeah. It just needs to be reinvested in the system as much as we can. And hopefully we can get that stuff out of picket. That big I and I stuff and then get those going to resolve the ticket with them. So obviously we don't need to act on Next step, steps. I'm gonna send an email to the state and say let's powwow with the fire and water committee. We're at that point and let them make their arguments why this is possible, not possible, and uh, and find out if they're still Interested in pursuing that. But is that agreeable with you, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Right. I will weatherization. I really don't. Jennifer had asked me to put this on the agenda because I think. Um,
Councilman Miller had asked to look at weatherization. I think he wants us to increase the fees back up from what I understand to 24. Yeah. It would have been proposed to me. It used to be 25 bucks, and it was cut for to reconnection. For reconnection. If you get cut off, you pay 25 bucks. It got cut to 1250. And I think there was even a move by some in the audience at one point that they wanted to get rid of the 1250 as well. And I told them, I said, that equates almost exactly to the amount we use in weatherization. Okay? So what Miller has discussed with me, I don't, I, he's not here to speak for himself, but what has been thought process was, if we go back to the 25, can we double the amount of weatherization that we do? He wants to sponsor that? Have at it. Okay. And, uh, if it comes from him direct, because obviously he's the one that will hear, if it comes from him, mm -hmm. his money that is going to be used for weatherization, if he wants to propose using this. And strictly for weatherization, but I can tell you, the $50,000 don't go as far as it used to go. It's Every, not going to come out of the general coffers of Blackstone. It would be strictly from the, the, the reconnect fee going back to 25, and it would strictly go into weatherization. He wants to bring that up here in the council meeting. I don't feel like the account and finance committee would be have our code stuff going if he recommended it, it is what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. You just waiting to talk to him and do whatever you got to do? Yeah. Man, a lot going on, guys. That's it. Do you want me to give you a quick FEMA update? Mm -hmm. I would love to see where you're at. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um... So my grand total requests submitted to FEMA were $813,256. Um, I've got it down to the local share, should only be 40 grand out of that. Are you sure that's 5%? 20 is obligated. Is by, well, we got one award today, so they, they're making they're only awarding me by category. So you did get the money. I did get my award for the debris, which the total for the debris was 333,917. Yes, this is just and sticks. Yep. The chipping, yep. chipping. The chipping, chipping picking that's it up. Done. That's all done, 100% complete. FEMA has obligated, they said they'll pay the $250,438. The state is obligated to pay 66, 783. That's the breakdown on the award. Now, you and I may know maybe the state doesn't pay the full 20%. I don't really. I was under the impression that 75 fit, 12%, 12.5% state, and 12.5% local. But is your 5% looking a whole lot better if that's the case? Yeah, yeah well, I, I got the award today that they had signed first, and it was 75, 20, and 5. Yep. So they might have changed it Much within the. Um, so that's really good. And you've already spent your 40, so you don't have to appropriate another 40. You, that's been spent. Well, I think Eric had asked at a council meeting to see if I could submit an insurance claim on that. Mm -hmm. And I, I tried. Of course, it's just yeah. kind of just died there. Um, you got to try. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I did. But I thought that was good news um, that if they obligated the way they did the debris, if they obligated. Right. Out of that whole storm. If they continued to obligate yeah, all of them like that. that. Well, then this is what it'll look like. Like I said, some, sometimes the electrical, mm -hmm. the cat F is different than the cat A and B. And, um, but I think, it, I think it went well. So how much money is left to be returned in town by then? Well, reimbursed? yeah, all of it right now. Okay. I just got the award for the debris. You got notice. I got the it. notice. I got the award. So now it's on the state to release it. Um, so how much? That's Bill 250 office. I should be able to get back. I'm we've hoping within the next the 30 days. We've already paid this out. Everything's paid. Been paid. The chipping, yes. the contractors from North Carolina. Every single one. Okay. So there's no bills that we need to pay. No. We just need to be paid. Just reimbursed. Correct. We're trying to just, I'm just really fighting to get it back because we've already, you know, that money was for something else. $800,000. I'm hoping to see the, the, the debris reimbursement by the end of December, and I'm just, just being optimistic um, and I'm pushing them real hard for the other items I did just get I think my cat B town claim which is like running the generators any emergency management stuff we did not the fire department um, that was hundred and seventy four thousand running those generators and and doing all that so oh, well, I could only hoping to recoup and stuff that's a, yeah that through. one's at the final stages so that I should be getting an award for that here shortly 
the electric one, it, I think it's because environmental is involved because we did have to replace some transformers and hmm. certain oh. things like that. They want to make sure. They want to make sure you dispose right. of them. Right, you need to make sure. Deal. Right, so we, we've already checked all the boxes. Dan and I have answered everything. It's just that one is not as close as these other ones is getting awarded. But that's about it. So this would be a fantastic job on that because I know that's aggravating. I've sure. done small scale ones, never 800,000. You know, I mean, we're almost in February again. <laughs> it's hard to believe that it's yeah, almost, almost been a year. year. That was a booger, and if she can get that money back, uh, that's awesome. The money, when it comes back, I don't want to commit it, but what I do want to do with at least a portion of it is reimburse ourselves and our reserve fund because we borrowed up $250,000. Oh, absolutely. You used that one-time draw from me, yeah. That one-time draw. We took two fifty out last summer to get us through the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, Wherever the money yeah. came from is where it needs to go back. Well, go back into, it went to the VDOT project, but it's going to free up the VDOT money we've collected the past couple payments, and that can go back into paving Church Street and the Correct. others and get us a little bit farther along in paving. No, we need to get back on track of wherever that money was is where it should go back. It came yeah. out of that South Main project. We'd save so up 700 plus. If it was in reserve, <laughs> it needs to go back to reserve, wherever it is, it needs mm -hmm. to go. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the whole reason. All right. And we'll report where we put everything, but. I anticipate taking of that 813, 250 of it and putting it back in the CD when we reinvest it. Okay. And that'll take us back to the $3.7 million. You got anything else, Tyler? No. 